All right. Unit 10, lecture 1 of 4. Only 4. So on the area of a region between two curves with respect to X. Okay, and what we're going to be doing is finding that area in green. You guys are going to really enjoy this unit because when you open up the online textbook, you're immediately at the section. You know? Uh, right? It's like, yeah, we made it. 7-1. Isn't that exciting? You don't have to change it. That's that's why you're really going to like this section, okay? Some people have done homeworks on that section, though, just using the problems from other sections. Yeah, it's a classic mistake. Uh, all right, let's recall from the beginning of Unit 7, areas under curves. I could ask you to find the area of the region enclosed by y equals 0, y equals x squared, x equals 0, and x equals 2. Okay, and if I asked you this, first thing you'd probably do is to sketch the region that I'm talking about. You got your x-axis, you got your y-axis, you got the graph of y equals 0. You have the graph of x equals 0. You have the graph of x equals 2. And you'll have the graph of y equals x squared, which you can kind of sketch, or if you wanted to plot specific points, you know, you got 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 2, 4. So maybe you can sketch like that instead of just random, a random curve. Okay, and... I really didn't need the x equals 0, but whatever. We're trying to find that area, right? Well, what do we need to find that exact area? Yeah, but before that, what was the expression that we could write for the exact area in green? Yeah, but before that. Before we even knew about antiderivatives and antiderivatives and their relationships with areas, well, after the Riemann sum. An integral. Thank you, Mr. Magnella. Yeah, we needed the infinite sum. An infinite Riemann sum. Okay, an integral was that infinite sum. Okay, it started 0, 1, for two, 1 to 2, and what we did is we took a bunch of skinny rectangles, that had a width that was an instantaneous change in x. So it's very, very skinny, which is why we denoted that width as a dx. And then the height was determined by the function. Okay, so we would say the integral from 0 to 2, an infinite sum of a bunch of heights times a bunch of infinitely skinny widths. Right, this is area under a curve. But then we discovered that antiderivatives and areas were related. And if you wanted to find an area under a function, you just needed to find the change in the antiderivative. Okay, so that came later. But this is the crucial thing, to remember that. And then, of course, secondary, not secondary, but like 
almost amazingly to find that infinite sum, we could find a change in an antiderivative. Okay, well, now I have two curves. And I want to find the area between the two curves. We have F, we have G. How can I find that area in green? Mr. Durrett? Find the area under the F of X and then subtract area under the F. Exactly. So in terms of an integral, what would that look like? Or integrals, what would that look like? from A to B. Okay, if we take the area under F, this area in black, well, that's going to be larger than the area in green. That will be the integral from A to B under F. And then if we take the area in red, the area under G, well, we will be subtracting that XX excess area and all of a sudden we have the area that we're looking for. Now recall if we have two integrals from A to B, both from A to B, how could I rewrite this to maybe only use one integral? It's just F minus G. You can split this up or you can put those two things together. Okay. So this is important, really the combination of the two integrals, but the idea of you're taking the area that kind of is greater than the area you're looking for, subtract that excess, boom, you have the area you're looking for. Okay, well, before we move further, an area of a region between two curves, don't worry about this vertically, this area will always be positive. Okay, well, let's try to figure out how to find the area between these two curves. I'll call them M of X and L of X. How to find the area in green between M and L, knowing that the area between those two curves, even though we're below the x-axis, is positive. From B to A of what? M minus L, L minus M. So let's think about that. Yeah, I like that. That works. But that makes it a little more complicated than it needs to be. Why don't we do from A to B and keep going from left to right? What would it be then, Mr. Conwell? Yeah, let's think about this. If I talk about the integral from A to B, of M minus L. Well, this area here under M would be this in black. That's going to be a negative area. That's actually the excess 
area. Well, what I would be doing is subtracting this negative area in red. Well, when I subtract that negative area, that's going to be adding a bigger positive area. Turns out it's really just going to be the same. It's really A to B of this guy minus that guy. This will end up being a positive, and that will be the area that I want. Okay, I'm not trying to say, like in general, what it's going to be because I want you guys to think about it. But there's one more situation if we are crossing the x axis. And I'm going to give you two different values. I'll say this is Q of X, and this is, I don't know, P of X. How do we find that area in green? Let's think the area under Q would be this positive area. The area under P would be that negative area. So I have to take that positive area of Q and add the positive area of P. Well, adding this positive area is the same as subtracting this negative area, which is what it is. So it turns out it's really the same. If we went to the left of the y-axis, everything would hold. So in general, I gave you three situations. Above the x-axis, we said it was f minus g. Below the x-axis, I said it was m minus l. And then crossing the x-axis, I said it was q minus p. In all three situations, it's what minus what. Ms. Ms. Bonke, I saw you say it. What did you say? Exactly. It is always the area from A to B of the function on top minus the function on the bottom. No matter where it is. Or, if you're lazy and you have a calculator, it could be either minus the other if you do what? Absolute value. Make it positive. Because if I did the other way around, if I did the bottom minus the top, I'd get a negative area. We'll just make it positive. And of course, this is if you're lazy and you have a calculator. Or if you're lazy and you don't have a calculator, you can just take either minus the other, find your area, and then if it's negative, you're like, well, it's got to be positive. So you just flip it. Okay? But you'll see the questions that are going to be asked are going to be asked in a way that you can't just be lazy.
you have to make sure you know which one's going to be on the top, which one's on the bottom. Okay, so that's the start. Let's do this problem. So we have two functions. This x squared plus 2, this y equals negative x. One's going to be above the other. Question is, which is above the other? Well, what's going to be very helpful, very, very, very helpful in this entire unit is sketching. Now, you're probably weak at sketching. You don't sketch often. You're used to going into y equals of your calculator and just plugging it in and graphing. Well, there's certain things that, sure, you'll be able to do that, but you're going to have to be able to sketch easy functions. Functions like x squared, x cubed, negative x squared, negative x cubed, plus a value, minus a value, any linear function you should be able to sketch, and then probably e to the x and log x you should be able to sketch. And if you don't know how to sketch them, go back to algebra, graphing things. You just pick some x's, and you'll plot some y's. In this situation, the x's are kind of picked for you. You have that this region is between x equals 0 and x equals 1. Well, that means you will just need to figure out the values of these two functions at 0 and at 1, and then you'll see which one will be above what uh, the other one. So I plug in 0 into the first one, I get 0, 2. I plug in 1 into the first one, I get the point 1, 3. Since it's x squared plus 2, I know it's going to kind of curve up. It's a parabola. Then I look at y equals negative x. Well, that's just your diagonal line going downward at a 45 degree angle. You have 0, 0, and you have 1, negative 1. Well, now we can see the region that I need to find the exact area of. You guys set up your integral and then find that area using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And then check your answer with a neighbor. Don't forget to take the antiderivative. Remember, area under a function is the same as the change in the antiderivative.
Once you get your answer and you've checked with the neighbor, go ahead and check to make sure your answer is correct by using a calculator. All right, remind yourselves of finding area between curves using a calculator. So get your calculators out or grab one of my calculators. Remind yourselves of finding areas under curves using a calculator. If you have an older operating system, remember it is whoops. it is math nine. If you see F N I N T. Well, you have an older operating system. You take the integral of your function. You say with respect to x, to say that you do comma x, and then you tell them the boundaries, comma, from 0 to 1, or from A to B. You get that, you can change it to a fraction by math enter entering. Any questions about that, Mr. McMaster? We good? Okay, let's do another one. Now, if you're not sure what e to the x looks like, we'll just plug in some values. You're looking between x equals 0 and 1. e to the 0 is this. e to the first is this.
The negative one? Well, that's the line, y equals negative one. Yeah. That's the bottom function. Should be your top minus the bottom. Right. So it's positive. Well, you, you, yes, you can do this, and once you get your answer, you'll get take it and make it a positive answer. Now, minus one, minus one is minus two. So you get negative e minus two, you know that's negative. So your answer should be positive e plus two. Yep. Now, I'd prefer you to see which one's the top and which one's the bottom first. It is just E. Sorry. All right, we should just get E. I forgot I changed the boundaries from last period. And that's it. Okay, if we checked with our calculator, we would have gotten the value that is the decimal equivalent of E. Okay. If we change this up. Let's find the area between y equals 1 over x, x equals 1, x equals e, and y equals 4. Look at your area. That would be the bottom. This is the top.
So we should notice y equals 4 is the top area under this would be the area of this rectangle. We would then subtract the area under the 1 over x to get this area in green. So top minus the bottom. Still, only the top now is the number. The bottom is the function. Pretty confident in this answer. Why don't we check with our calculators? Good question. Most of the stuff we're going to be doing will be stuff where the most important part of it is setting up the correct integral and just that. Um, there will be some problems where, yes, you'll have to go all the way through and find the area, but we will see that things will get more and more complicated and Actually, finding the areas by taking the antiderivative and plugging in values would take us just a large amount of time. So even in this lesson, you're going to see I'm going to stop saying find the area. I'm just going to start saying set up the integral and use your calculator. So I would say at least half, if not more than half, of your test will be calculator allowed. Okay, do we get 40 minus 5? All right. Any questions about this problem? Notice how it's different. The line is the top. Function is the bottom. So it's kind of different from this guy where this guy was the top, that was the bottom. Okay. Finding the area between two intersecting graphs. Find the area between the graphs of y equals x cubed, y equals 8, and x equals 0. So notice this one. I don't give you both x coordinates. I just give you one. I give you x is 0. You're going to have to find the other one. It's not hard, but the key is maybe the sketch. So start by sketching. Let's see what we can do.
All right, the only difference here is that we had to find this point. You have to find the intersection. Well, how do you find the intersection? You set your two equations that intersect equal to each other. They're both equal to y. In this case, through your sketch, it's easy to see that they intersect at x equals 2. Well, that gives you your other boundary. You're going to go from 0, which they told you, to 2. Take the area of the rectangle, which is 8 times 2, which is 16. You'll subtract the area under x cubed from 0 to 2. Questions about this guy? Well, maybe I don't give you any vertical lines, any boundaries. Maybe just graphing these two equations, maybe you'll see there is a distinct area that have that will have distinct boundaries and you just need to find where to start and where to finish based off of the intersections of these two graphs. So I can visually see my region, but the question is, where are these two points? Oh, I have to find the intersection. How do you find the intersections of two graphs? Well, set them equal to each other. How would I solve this? I have a quadratic, so I move everything onto one side. And I solve by factoring or using the quadratic formula. Thank goodness I can factor. Now, 
this would be one of those questions where I would just say, set up the integral to find the area of the region bounded by the graphs of that. Just because I know it would take us some time to find that area by hand. But you can find it using your calculator. So go do that. Look at that. Questions about that guy? You have to find the intersection to be able to set your boundaries. Once you've found those, then you're ready to set up your integral. Okay, again, for this one, set up your integral to find the area between F and G. And you're going to set up your integral without an absolute value. Because you're not lazy. So it's tricky, it's not obvious where this quadratic is centered. You might have to just start plugging in values. Plug in zero, plug in one, plug in negative one, plug in two, plug in negative two. Maybe you find the intersections first and then you just graph points in between the intersections. That might be the easiest. Maybe the first thing we should do is find the intersections. What's that? Thinking out loud. One minus two plus one is zero. Zero one. One, two, three, four. Two, four, eight, nine. There is x squared plus two x plus one between 
negative one and two. Well, three X plus three will start out here at negative one zero. At zero, it's going to be up at three. At one, it's going to be at six. And at three, it's going to be at nine. So that should be a straight line. Like that. Not perfect, but whatever. So, turns out, the top function is the line, the bottom function is the quadratic. Some people mess up on that. So, when you set up your integral, it'd be from negative 1 to 2, but of 3x plus 3 minus the quantity of x squared plus 2x plus 1. When will we have to go from 2 to negative 1? So from right to left? Not here. Not now. Not now. Because we always want to make sure we have a positive area between the two curves. So we'll always go left to right. We'll always do top minus bottom. Okay. Well, what if we intersect at more than two places? Take this situation between this F and this G. How would we find the area between these two curves? What do you think, Mr. Magdala? Yes, we'd set up multiple integrals. Why, Mr. Magnella? Sure, because we have two different what? Yeah, we have two different tops. F is the top from A to B, but then from B to C, G is above F. So two different tops, we need two different integrals. We'll need one when F is the top, and we'll have to add the one when the G is the top. Or the absolute value, if we're lazy, and I have a calculator. And it doesn't have to be F minus G. It can just be either minus the other. All right, so real quick, using a calculator... Set up integrals, or just one integral, without an absolute value, to find the area between those two functions.
did type in something right. That's better. We got one more type of problem that I need to show you, so don't back up just yet. We find the intersections are at the twos and at zero after we find uh, second calc intersections of these two graphs at those two different areas. So you would go from negative two to zero of the cubic graph, which is f of x minus g of x. And then I would add the integral from zero to, is that two? Did you guys find it was two? Okay, good. G of X is at the top minus F of X is at the bottom. Okay? So you're allowed to use your calculator on that one. Something like this where you'd expect to graph and find the intersection might be a little unreasonable. Not too unreasonable. Okay, finally, finding a value K such that X equals K splits up the area of the region. Okay, so we did this first. This is the first example we found. The question is, what is k such that x equals k splits the area of this region into two equal parts? So let me freeze that and grab the picture that we created for that problem. Hold off until uh, we're done with this before you guys leave. Please. Okay, so here we are. I'm saying there is some vertical line that is an x equals some value that will split this region into two equal regions. Okay? Now, do we think it's right smack dab in the middle between 0 and 1? No, because we kind of get a little bit wider over here to the bottom. So it's probably going to be shifted over a little bit to the right. And right there, we need to figure out what that value is so that the area here is equal to the area here. Well, two ways to think about it. You can say, all right, well, the area from 0 to k here will be equal to the area from k to 1. And we can actually use that to help us solve for k. But that's a lot of k's on two different sides of an equation. There's an easier way. I know what the total area is here, right? I found that the total area from 0 to 1 of x squared plus 2 plus x was what? 17 sixths. Well, that means the area from 0 to k under x squared plus 2 plus x has to equal what? Exactly, half of this. Don't leave yet. Well, how do I solve for k here? Exactly. How do I find this? Well, I take the antiderivative derivative 
and I'd find the change between zero and K, well, I plug in zero at zero, I plug in K, I get some cubic function with Ks in it. Here's my equation. I can solve this. How? Do not do that. That's not going to work. This is how. How do you solve that using your calculator? Graph both sides, set them equal to each other. You will find k is equal to 0.588, which is just what we thought, a little bit to the right of the midpoint. Okay? I'm going to show you one more example like this on the video, finding the k. I'm also going to show you the work to get this k is equal to 0.588. Well, uh, homework is online. Thank you. All right, let's see how we found this value, 0.588. I would graph y equals one-third x cubed plus 2x plus one-half x squared. That's one equation. I'd graph y equals 17 halves. Sorry, 12. That's the other one. You'll see they intersect. Right there. I find that intersection. Second calc intersect. Enter, enter, enter. 0.5880983. Okay, so approximately 0.588. Let's find another one. Let's go back to a previous example. Let's look at maybe the second one. Okay, so here, which line y equals k splits us into two equal regions. So there's a line somewhere, probably to the right of. 0.5 again, where this area and this area are the same. All right, so I found that the area was equal to E, so that means the area from 0 to K of E to the X plus 1 is going to be equal to E over 2. How do I find K? I'll take the antiderivative, which was E to the X, plus x, instead of from 0 to 1, it's going to be from 0 to k. And that will equal e over 2. So that gives me e to the k plus k equals e squared. I'll go ahead and solve that. Again, in my y equals, We'll graph both sides. We want e to the k, so e to the x plus x, and then e squared. That's e to the x plus x. That's e squared. Second calc intersect. I'll go ahead and pop over. Enter, enter, enter. It looks like it's too far over. 1.7. I feel like I made a mistake. Oh, it's not e squared. Sorry. It should be e over 2. Good. I'm glad. Because that's outside of my range. I'm looking for something just a little bit to the right of 0.5. So I see 1.7. I'm like, that can't be right. Well, it's because it's not e squared here. It's e over 2. Look and change that e over to intersection should be between zero and one. There we go. 
second calc intersect enter 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 I don't like that answer either. What happened? We said this was equal to E. Oh, jeez. Mr. Messner, I am awful right now. I'm sorry. This is not just e to the k plus k. This is e to the k plus k minus e to the zero is one. And then plug in zero here. So this is going to give us our right answer, right? You plug in k, sure, you plug in zero. It's not zero. It's e to the zero. Oof. My bad. Here we go. E to the K plus K minus one. Graph. I feel like I don't want to get the minus one in there. No, it's in there. Second calc intersect, enter, enter, enter. Ah, okay, there we go. K is 0.5775229. Okay, so that is how we find that value that splits it into two equal spots. All right, that's it. Thank you.